Hey there, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of The Dark Parade. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. <laughs> Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. All right, folks. So uh, we have had uh, a fairly good run of things of late. And this one is going to be a little bit different in that you can argue that this is not necessarily a horror movie, but it falls into the found footage category squarely. And it's got horror elements. So we're going to go with it. Uh, of course, I am talking about the movie Europa Report uh, from the year of our Lord 2013. And the the brief sweep of uh, what this movie is about is uh, it, it's directed by a guy named Sebastian Cordero, uh, who is best known for this and a bunch of other uh, Spanish movies. Um, <laughs> like uh, Pescador, which I think is something about fish. And uh, Sin Muertos No He Carnival, uh, which I think means with death we don't have a carnival. Uh, at any rate, uh, it was also written by Philip Gelat, or Gelat, uh, who has uh, who wrote The Spine of Night, uh, and and wrote some video games, including some of the Tomb Raider games and that kind of thing. So, um, a pretty good writer, I think. Uh, but Europa Report uh, is about um, a, 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 you know a team of astronauts sent to Europa, the moon of uh, Jupiter. That's right, right? Moon of Jupiter? Anyway, sent to the Europa to see if there's life there. That they kind of suspect, hey, there's life under the ice of Europa because of all these heat vents and so forth. And so we're going to send our folks there to see what's what and it is uh it has a pretty good cast with uh charlotte charlotte copley from uh district nine as, as one of the leads as well as michael intvist um you've got yourself a little bit of Imbeth davids uh showing up in there um there is dan fogler uh, Daniel Wu, Anna Maria Marinka. Anyway, a uh, pretty good cast. And the uh, they, they go to Europa. It turns out that there is not just something below the ice. There is something uh, very much alive and, and kind of deadly. And, uh, you know, also there's some business with losing members of the crew along the way. But we're not here to judge the relative and subjective quality of this movie. Oh, no, no, no. If you are a listener to Found Footage Fool, you will know that we have a very specific set of five criteria that we will use to ensure that uh, we appropriately weigh the heart of this movie, uh, much like Amit, <laughs> and decide whether or not it's a successful Found Footage movie. So, the first of our criteria is keeping the camera on. Does it make sense in this movie uh, to have the footage that we have found? And that is very much the case because this is, uh, uh, you know, it's a recorded log of the events of this mission. So, it's a lot of, you know, here are the cameras on the ship, here are the cameras in the ship, here are some personal journals that are being recorded by the crew as well as some interview footage uh, mixed in between with some of the uh, the upper management of the mission of this expedition. So, yeah, totally makes sense that we would have the footage that we have. And, you know, without getting into the authenticity part, some of that stuff is fairly impressive, you know? Like when you're seeing the exterior shots of the ship and, and that kind of thing, looks pretty good. Uh, you know, I haven't been to space personally... But it it feels like they kind of captured what that might be like. So then let, let's get to uh, our second category. Uh, with the first being a relatively successful uh, 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 sort of uh, effort with uh, keeping the camera on. So let's get to characters. And this is kind of where the problems begin, I think, with this movie. Is that none of the characters feel terribly well fleshed out. 
that there's you know Charlotte Copley's character you understand like oh he, his kids are back home and he, he sort of regrets being on this mission to some degree but he's also kind of charismatic and upbeat and you get maybe a little bit with Dr. Unger the Beth Davids character who is back on earth uh, as well as Dan Fogler who is also you know one of one of the higher ups in the mission but aside from that I guess maybe Rosa who is the Anna Maria Marinka character gets the most screen time and and she's kind of fine like I think all the performances are are totally fine in this movie but you know it, like she seems ambitious uh, I suppose would be her main characteristic. It, it's just not a movie where you feel like you're rooting for any of the characters. You know, you're not rooting against them the way that you often do in some of these found footage movies where the characters are terribly irritating and you just want them to stop with all the talking and the breathing. <laughs> this is much more like I, I don't dislike anybody, but I just don't feel like I've got uh, other than Charlotte Copley who. You know, slight spoilers for Europa Report doesn't make it through the mission, and so at a certain point, he's just no longer in the movie. And the one character that seemed like really engaging and and kind of an audience surrogate in a way uh, just goes away, and that's a real bummer. So for characters, it's it, it's a real kind of flat line. Of the, for every moment where I was kind of rooting for. Uh, Copley's character of James Corrigan there are moments where I just didn't care at all about what was going on with uh, the rest of the, the cast so yeah eh, it's kind of a, a, a disappointing result there uh, which brings us to authenticity does the movie feel authentic is it believable is what you're seeing uh, before your eyes feel like it makes sense in the world that the movie has created and for sure, in fact, one of the bigger issues I have with the movie is that it gets so bogged down in the sort of routine of here's what it would be like to be on this mission. Um, it, you know, oh, we've got some problem landing. Now we're, we've landed. Uh, let's go walk around on the ice a little bit. Let's run our scans. Let, you know, let's leave these logs for, uh, you know, our kids and people back home and that kind of thing. It gets so caught up in the in in the authenticity part of it sometimes I, I think it forgets to be an entertaining movie and uh and that is also a bit of a problem so i i yes is it authentic a hundred percent it it feels like uh a, a very believable uh representation of what a mission like this this would be up up to and including the end of the movie uh where it gets a little more you know monstrous um, so yeah, as far as authenticity goes, completely uh, authentic uh, does not mean it, it's entertaining, unfortunately. So, which brings us to watchability. Is this movie watchable? And I mean, to call it watchable is underselling it. It is a very watchable movie. It, it's well done. Uh, like I said, it's well acted. It looks good. Um, the, the idea of going to another planet and discovering life is incredibly compelling. It's a wonderful idea for a found footage movie and, and, and far better than, you know, what dark side of the moon or whatever that found footage movie was that was just trash. We might do that one next just to provide a point of comparison to make me like this one more, but the, yes, is, is it watchable for sure? Uh, does that mean it's a great watch? Not really. I, 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 as much as I hate to say it, I feel like this movie is just kind of dull. And I, I don't think it needs to descend into pure monster movie like uh, something like the movie Life, which deals with encountering alien life or alien for that matter. You know, this is a much more measured take on that. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with <laughs> that being the case of, of presenting this in a way that's a little more realistic and a little more... Uh, uh, believable but it it still just gets to a point and I think this goes back to the, the characters not being people that you're really rooting for that at a certain point you just kind of don't care at, at what's happening it's like okay well then just show me the monster and let's get done 
because I don't I don't have any emotional investment in the lives of these characters, so I don't care if they make it or not. And there's a lot of a big part of the last part of the the movie is hey, are they going to make it off of the planet Europa or not? And at a certain point, as I was watching, I was like, I don't care. I don't care if they get off. I don't care if they get home. I all I want is for this movie to give me the money shot and then wrap it up. And you know, eventually that happened, but uh, it took it a little too long to get there. Um, and and then our, our fifth criteria being, you know, a found footage horror movie podcast is uh, what about the scares in this movie? And eh, I don't know that this movie is very frightening, unless the idea of life uh, outside of the planet Earth terrifies you. There are some moments that are more 2001-esque than they are like horror movie where people encounter, you know, we, we see from uh, a, a very limited perspective their reaction to, you know, what they are discovering on Europa. And again, we do finally see this, uh, this creature, but it's not meant for scares, really. It's, just, I, I don't know. I, I find it hard to believe that anybody ever left Europa Report thinking like, oh, that movie was scary. Uh, so I don't, I don't think that's the case. Um, so where does that leave us, you might ask? Uh, well, I think it leaves us with a real mixed bag. Is the movie well made? Sure. Is it entertaining or scary or uh, funny or exciting? Uh, in very limited capacity. I, like I said, I think once uh, Charlotte Copley leaves the film, a lot of the life of the movie kind of leaves with him. And then you're just waiting for the monster part of it, which isn't a significant enough portion of the movie to carry it. So, yeah, I don't know that I would recommend Europa Report. Not because it, it's not well done, it's just a little dull. And I think that's where we're going to leave it. We're going to put Europa Report up on the shelf now and say, you know, if you found yourself on a Sunday afternoon watching Europa Report, it's a good recipe for a nap. Uh, <laughs> but it's not the worst movie you're ever going to see. And if somebody was uh, a big, you know, uh, space exploration nerd and thought that, you know, oh, they get it right. Eh, fine, fine. I could see that argument, but... Uh, I ain't that guy, and I just want the movie to be entertaining, and it wasn't terribly entertaining. So, uh, that is gonna do it for, uh, th this time on Found Footage Fool. Uh, thank you as always for joining me. Um, we've got more coming up this month if you are, uh, listening, uh, to the Dark Parade on the regular. Uh, we will have a, an episode on Moby Dick coming up very soon, and that's gonna be very exciting. Uh, with with Duncan McLeish. Uh, you're also going to get a What You Watching next week. Um, I'm gearing up for June, which is all going to be universal horror movies. And uh, if you want to catch up on uh, past episodes, obviously you can uh, subscribe on the podcast catcher of your choice, and I would certainly appreciate uh, if you did so, as well as rating and reviewing where that is possible. That helps uh, a bunch. Uh, you can also go to youtube.com forward slash Legion Podcasts where you can see uh, video versions of, of this podcast, among many, many others. And uh, uh, finally, you can go to legionpodcast.com forward slash the dash dark dash parade. And there you can find every single episode uh, we have done of this program, uh, along with links to the social media channels, fair warning, uh, Discord is where I am most active. I'm trying to limit uh, Facebook and, and Twitter and all of that stuff to about one visit a day just to check in and make sure I answer any messages. But if you do leave me a message on any of those locations, I will certainly get it. Um, and I think that will do it for now. We'll be back with another Found Footage Fool uh, in June, according to my schedule. So uh, the next couple of Fridays will be What You Watching and Heart of Horror. And, uh, and that'll do it for this time. So, uh, as always, thank you very much for listening. And thank you, as always, for joining the Dark Parade. We'll see you soon. <laughs>